cleared away on the streets of old Dodge City. Dodge City, Kansas, once referred to as the wickedest little city in America. It attracted some of the toughest hombres in the country about 100 years ago. Their hangout was the fabled Long Branch Saloon. And Dodge City attracted some of the toughest peacekeepers in the country, men like Wyatt Earp, who incidentally Dodge City's main street is named after, Bat Masterson, and Doc Holliday. Of course, Dodge City was not without its women. Gals like Squirrel Tooth Alice, Big Emma, and Doc Holliday's girlfriend, Big Nose Kate Elder. These characters are surely a far cry from the ones in the long-running television series that put modern-day Dodge City on the map. Gunsmoke. We're in Gunsmoke country today and happy you're with us. From Memorial Stadium in Dodge City, Kansas, it's another IEBN sports special. The sixth annual Boot Hill Bowl. Fitting the Beavers from Buena Vista College of Storm Lake, Iowa, against the Cavaliers of St. Mary of the Plains of Dodge City, Kansas. We're looking forward to quite a ball game here today. Most of the prognosticators around the territory kind of look for it to be an air game from the Beavers of Buena Vista, and uh, the Cavaliers of St. Mary of the Plains rely pretty much on a ground game. They've got a speedster and a fellow by the name of Walt Haslam who's been averaging about 125.5 yards per game. He's got 9'6 speed. Coach Jim Hirschberger of the Buena Vista Beavers said one of the things he's got to worry about is containing him. They don't want to let anybody get outside. Uh, their main concern is they don't want to be looking at the back of any of these speed merchants if they can help it. The Beavers, of course, are members of the Iowa Conference, and they finished second in the conference action this year behind William Penn. Their record six wins, one loss in conference action. They were seven and two on the season overall and really caught fire in the late stages of the season. They won their opening ball game, dropped the next two, and then came on to take all the rest. They've got a great passer in Steve Knutson, great receivers in Steve and Jeff Trost. They got a crunching fullback in Jim Kafer, and we're looking forward for lots of things to happen. Cyro, another threat on the pass, as along with Stapleton and other people. On the other side of the ledger for the Cavaliers of St. Mary of the Plain, they uh, rely pretty much on a ground game with those speed merchants that they do have, and they have been successful in getting the job done. They're members of the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference. Their record coming into the ballgame today, eight wins as against one loss. The Buena Vista Beavers marching band is here along with their drill team, 53 strong. Also on hand to entertain us during the course of the ball game today will be the Dodge City Red Demon High School marching band, 185 strong. And something a little bit about them, they haven't been invited to participate in the Tournament of Roses Parade out in Pasadena, California on New Year's Day. And uh, the folks in Dodge City got a fun drive going to make sure the band could partake of those activities. We're happy to have with us the chairman of the Boot Hill Bowl Committee here in Dodge City, Kansas, Mr. Leon Flax. They've done a terrific job. The banquet last night was great. Leon, what do you look for now in the ball game? Oh, we're looking for a great ball game this afternoon. The sun's shining, the field's in relatively good shape, and we've got two fine offensive teams and some that play a little bit of defense here. I think we're just going to have an absolutely great game. Now, of course, it takes more than just one man to set up something like this. How many people overall were involved in getting this boot hole, hill bowl ready? Well, the committee was comprised mainly of 14 members that did a real fine job. And then down on game day, why we have quite a number of people that really get out and help us finish it up and put it all, all together and everything. And then after today, you can rest until next year. You bet. We'll have another meeting in a week or so, talk it all over, see what we can do better, and let it lay for next till next year. Okay, congratulations again, Leon, on a great job, and we're looking forward to the ball game. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, the field is in great shape, and I imagine that uh, the teams were both out there prior to going out there in their cleats and their uniforms and the like. 
testing the field for sponginess and what have you. And it's in great shape. They did a great job getting it ready after the heavy snow. Now let's look at another interview with the coach of St. Mary of the Plain, Matt May. Coach, you've seen Buena Vista on film. You know that they move the ball a lot. What do you expect them to do today? Well, Steve, I think they're going to move the ball today. Uh, they have a habit of it, and uh, they do it with uh, great poise and great concentration. Uh, I guess you'd call it a very versatile offense, run, pass. Uh, I think uh, when you talk of a quarterback like Knutson, you're talking of a very excellent uh, college uh, quarterback. So I'm sure they're going to move the ball on us. Is there any uh, key player in there that you think that if you could stop one certain guy that that could stop their offense or two or three players you'll have to key on or oh, what about that? Steve, I don't think we can stop that offense uh, stopping any one player. We're going to have to be able to stop the entire uh, uh, offensive uh, set. Uh, running out of a pro-I formation as they do, uh, Kafer at fullback will get some yards for him, but uh, Trost, the uh, running back, is going to be real, real difficult to stop. And then, of course, when we get him slowed down at all, uh, he is also an excellent pass receiver, uh, leading uh, with uh, his brother at the split end for the uh, number of receptions on the year. So we can't key any one player or any one thing. We're just going to have to play the entire uh, field as far as defense, try to stop the bomb, and try to stop the long run, and hope that we can uh, get them into a situation of, uh, of uh, maybe forcing a mistake or something like that. I, I, you don't shut down an offense that has been so successful all year in one ball game. Okay, thank you, Coach. Well, the two clubs are back out on the field now, and uh, we're awaiting the individual introductions of the players. Buena Vista Beavers, for those of you watching in color, are dressed in their blue and gold uniforms, ironically. By a flip of the coin, the Beavers are the home team in this ball game, and the Cavaliers of St. Mary are in their white uniforms. We're looking forward to a high-scoring ball game. Just about the time you say that, it'll end up 3-2 or some such thing. But we do know that both ball clubs have great offenses, and we're looking forward to seeing them in action. from the Boot Hill Bowl in Dodge City, Kansas. We're happy to have Coach Jim Hirschberger of the Buena Vista Beavers. Strangely enough, the home team for this game today. Hirsch, uh, you have to have a lot of community support and that type thing to make a trip like this possible, and it's your first bowl appearance. How does this all come about? Oh, I'm uh, extremely pleased with the uh, following we've got, and I want to sp pay special tribute to uh, our three banks back in Storm Lake, the Commercial Bank, Security Bank, and the uh, Citizens First National, Harry Shaler, Lloyd Thomas, and Lee Blue, who helped make this telecast uh, possible and to all the loyal support we get from our fans back there. Well, now, you had kind of a long trip down. Uh, you left a little earlier than you anticipated. How was the trip overall? Oh, the trip was just uh, super, uh, Bob, and I haven't found anything about this uh, complete organization yet that I even hesitate to dislike. They're just super people, and it's a great organization, a terrific bowl, and uh, I think it's a great afternoon for a ball game, and we are so anxious to play it, as I'm sure St. Mary is, and uh, I, I just uh, am overwhelmed with the goodness of these people and uh, the support of our people that are here in Dodge City, and we can't wait to get going. I can imagine that's true. Now, you've had a chance to look at the St. Mary's Ball Club on film, and in fact, you scouted them in their last ball game of the season against Bethel. What do you look for? Bob, they have two backs that are extremely quick, probably quicker than any backs that we've ever faced since I've been at Buena Vista. And uh, they have the ability to go uh, all the way, and uh, they just have a fine ball club. Uh, George is a great one, two great defensive tackles, and super outfit. Well, fine, Jim. Uh, I know you're anxious to get back into the locker room with your team. Thank you very much, and good luck in the ball game. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Well, as you can see, the teams are down on the field. We're ready with the inter individual introductions of the players, and we'll turn things over now to the PA man, Ken Schmidt. Go ahead. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the sixth annual Boot Hill Bowl. Matching the two teams on the scoreboard, the visiting team, the Cavaliers from St. Mary of the Plains College, Dodge City, Kansas. And the home team from Storm Lake, Iowa, the Beavers 
from Buena Vista College. Introducing, first of all, the white-clad Cavaliers. Number 83, Tom Arnick. Defensive tackle, number 76, Craig McDaniel. Middle guard, number 73, Steve Schmidt. Defensive tackle, number 77, Mark Van Dyke. Defensive end, number 51, Dave Kirchman. Linebacker, number 20, Matt McKee. And number 42, Roger Schmidt. Defensive backs, number 85, John Hall. Number 82, Harold Edwards. Safeties, number 40, Chuck Ferguson. And number 32, Pat George. The remaining seniors, number double zero, center. Fruska. Number 11, quarterback Mike McNeese. Offensive guard, number 62, Mark Vosmer. Offensive tackle, number 64, Gary Kansky. Offensive guard, number 72, Paul DeGata. Offensive split end, number 80, Tom Boffman. And the head coach of the Cavaliers, Matt May. <laughs> For the Beavers from Buena Vista, number 40, the split end, Steve Trost. At offensive tackle, number 75, Daryl Schumacher. At offensive guard, number 66, Dan Phillips. The center, number 50, Jeff Arp. At offensive guard, number 60, Sonny Riesland. At offensive tackle, number 72, Jeff B. Jacobson. The tight end, number 81, Larry Stapleton. The flanker, number 24, Dave Syro. The halfback position, number 41, Jeff Trost. The fullback, number 32, Jim Kafer. Number 14, the quarterback, Steve Knudsen. The remaining seniors for Buena Vista, number 10, quarterback, Mike Cooper. Linebacker, number 34, Brad Jones. Linebacker, number 62, Max Struby. Offensive guard, number 65, Craig Bjork. Defensive end, number 83, Larry Norum. And the kicker, number 84, Kevin Egley. The head coach of the Buena Vista College Beavers, Jim Hirschberger. Both ball clubs are keyed up and ready to rear in this ball game. We're ready for the toss of the coin, the mock toss of the coin right now at the center of the field. McDaniels and Van Dyke, the captains for the Cavaliers. We can't catch the numbers up the Beavers. It looks like Knudsen and Struby out there for the Beavers. The officials for the ball game, the referee is Roy Piper. The umpire, the umpire is Ken Strobel, the headlinesman Dick Falcon, the field judge Tony Falcon, and the back judge Lance Nichols, all from Dodge City, Kansas. Talking things over, and of course the visiting team had the choice, but the Beavers won the toss, elected to receive. 
from over in Jake Ann's, the Beavers will be receiving at the north end of the field. The goal to our left, Cavaliers with Sherhart kicking off will be kicking from the south end. Just about a perfect day for a football game. A wee bit on the nippy side. The field in excellent condition. The two teams take the field and we'll be going into the action with this opening kickoff momentarily. Checking the sogginess out in the center of the field to make sure that he can find a uh, dry spot to put that kicking tee on. Deep for the Beavers on the kickoff, we'll have John Rosebud, Jeff Trost, and Dan Richardson. Check that Rich Stulo will be back deep. In the middle is Rosebud. Gerhardt, number 63, will be kicking off for the Cavaliers. Evidently, from all indications, a soccer-style kicker. Waiting for the okay from the referee. He says, I'm ready, you ready, let's go. And this ball game underway. Bounces around and finally picked up by Throws. Looks for some blockers out in front. Gets around one man. Still looking, coming to the near side. And rolled out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. This ball game underway. Bounces around and finally picked up by Trost. Looks for some blockers out in front. Gets around one man. Still looking. Coming to the near side. And rolled out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. So the ball game underway. And uh, the ball a little hard to get the handle on. And as a result, the blocking broke down. First and ten for the Beavers from their own 17-yard line. 5-2 defense thrown up there by the Cavaliers. Right, as watch Knutson watch that ball. I don't want you to get over. gets ready to blast out the signal. Gives on the handoff straight ahead to Caper. Picks up about four yards up to the 21-yard line. Mark Van Dyke on the stop for the Cavaliers along with Bosman. Second and about six for the Beavers. They get a more ball. Straight ahead uh, again was uh, Kafer on the carry. Got maybe a couple. Van Dyke and Schmidt on the stop that time for the Cavaliers. Make it third and about five, a long five. Steve Trost back into the lineup, replacing Jim Brune. They're doing the messenger work right now for Coach Jim Hirschberger's Beavers. Flanked way out wide to the right of Syro. And to the left, Steve Trost. Dropping back to throws. Knutson, the rush is on, and he's nailed way back there. Let's see who got in there first. Number 20, Matt McKee came charging through and threw Knutson for about an six, seven yard loss. So the Beavers are going to have to go into punt formation real quick. Al Fitch into punt for the Beavers. We'll be kicking from the end zone. Dropping back deep is Gene Flax for the Cavaliers. Low snap from center, bounces in there, but he gets it away, gets a nice high spiral kick away, coming down on the far side of the field, takes the beaver bounce, rolling down there, the flag down in the end zone. We may have a roughing the kicker penalty on the Cavaliers. We'll have to wait and see. There is a flag on the field. Okay, on the replay, you can see that the, the rushers in there, it's a bad snap, but Fitch gets a punt off. There's 51 crashing into him after he got the kick away. Roughing the punter, it'll be a first down for the Beavers. Well, that's a big break for the Beavers because Dave Kirchman, after Fitch definitely had the ball away, came plowing on through into him. And of course, the Beavers will take the ball, which will give them the first and 10 as the end result. So the first break of the ball game goes in the Beavers' favor. 
And the question is now, they didn't get the greatest of field position with it, but nevertheless, they're better off than they were because they didn't turn the ball over to the Cavaliers. And they have the ball first and 10 at their own about 26 and a half yard line. Well, no, we didn't get a first down out of it. So it's fourth and about two. So again, Fitch is going to go into punt formation because it's from the spot of the foul. They had to mark it from the goal line, the reason being. So he's going to punt again with Flax deep for the Cavaliers. Good snap from center this time. And he gets off a short kick this time off the side of his foot, slices and goes out of bounds at about the 41 yard line of the Beavers. So now their defense is going to be put to the test. So uh, the brakes kind of even themselves up a little bit. First and 10 for St. Mary of the Plain on the 41 yard line of the Beavers of the Vista. They break out of it, they go into the pro set. Martin has the quarterback for him. Gives on the straight ahead in there to Gene Flax. Gets across the 40 down to about the 36 yard line to pick up a five. So we've got Max Struby on the stop for the Beavers. Second and about five for the Cavaliers. They break out of that huddle once again. We've got Black, Alderman, and Kane along with the keys in the backfield. now. Looks, throws over here to the near side. The man wide open. Gene Flax pulls it in and goes in for the score. From McNeese to Gene Flax on a second and five situation. He just hesitated in the backfield momentarily and then was wide open. Okay, I think the Beavers were caught a little bit by surprise here. St. Mary hasn't been known as a passing team. You see the quarterback dropping back, and he just floats it out there. His receiver's wide open. Then he muscles his way in down at the five-yard line. Quick points for St. Mary. Jim Cox had a chance at uh, sobbing flags, but couldn't hold on. So real quick, like the Cavaliers cash in. Flags on the play. Now, whether there was movement on the Cavalier side of the line or what, we'll have to wait and see. Encroachment charged against the Beavers, so they'll move it half the distance to the goal. Or maybe they won't. We'll have to wait and see. And whether or not they'll still kick it. If they still decide to kick, it'll be from the one and a half. The ball moved there. Surehart is still in there and has put the kicking tee down on the ground, so they're evidently still going to go for the automatic, they hope. Snap from center high, but he gets the kick away, and it is good. And the Cavaliers leap out in front by a score of 7 to nothing early in the ball game with 11.58 to play in the first quarter. Sitting up here in the booth with us today, helping us out is Darrell Ewald spotting for St. Mary's and Steve Rose doing the spotting for Buena Vista. Also along with us up here in the booth, we have Dick Utter. Uh, Dick, some comments on what just happened there in the early stages. Well, I think what really shows early is just lack of preparation time by Beavers. They laid off, they look a little rusty, both offensively just like handling the uh, first kickoff there. It bobbled around, they finally got it. I think they'll smooth things out. They went to sleep a little bit on uh, letting this team score in two offensive plays, but it's going to be a ball. <laughs> they went to sleep a little bit. On <laughs> In the early stages. Well, I think what really shows early is just lack of preparation time by Beavers. They laid off. They look a little rusty, both offensively, just like handling the uh, first kickoff there. It bobbled around. They finally got it. I think they'll smooth things out. They went to sleep a little bit on uh, letting this team score in two offensive plays, but it's going to be a ball game yet. Okay, thanks, Dick. Ready to go again now with the kickoff. A sure heart makes his approach to the ball. End over end, and who's going to pick it up this time? Stulo picks it up for the Beavers. Cuts to the right side, coming up, up over the 35-yard line. 
are right at the 35-yard line. Rich Dulo returning it for the Beavers. So they'll take over now, first and 10 from their own 35-yard line, the best field position they've had so far in the ball game. They trail 7-0 in the early stages of the first quarter. In that backfield for the Beavers, Knutson at quarterback, Trost, Kafer, and Siren. Here's a handoff to Trost. Comes off the right side. Gets dumped there by Owen Kane, the left side cornerback. And picks up about uh, three yards, make it second and seven. Jim Bruin replacing Steve Trost in the Beaver lineup, carrying the message. Second and seven situation for Buena Vista. High row flank way to the right. Keeper out to the left as Knudsen drops back to throw. Throws out here on the left side, intended in there for Jeff Trost and overshoots his mark. The following telecast is being brought to you by permission of the Boot Hill Bowl Committee, Leon Flax Chairman, in conjunction with the NAIA Commissioner's Office in Kansas City, Missouri. The Boot Hill Bowl is officially sanctioned by the NAIA, an organization of 523 member colleges located in all 50 states. All right, third and seven for the Beavers now. Let Barton come out. Drops back. He wants to throw again. Looks to this side. It's uh, smothered in there. And they're on him, McDaniel, Van Dyke, along with Arnick. So once again, the Beavers are going to be forced into a punting situation as they come up fourth and 11. And dropping back is Pat George for the Cavaliers of St. Mary. So the Beaver offense not able to get themselves untracked in their first two possessions. Waiting for the snap, Al Fitch, good snap from center, gets the ball. It's an end over end kick away, the Beavers coverage very good, ball rolls down, and they're letting it roll, rolling, rolling, as practically the whole Beaver team is down there to stop it down at the 27 yard, correction, 22 yard line of the Cavaliers. They'll take over first and 10 from that spot. Beaver fans on the far side of the field uh, jumping up and down to keep warm. They haven't had too much to cheer about it yet, but we're sure they will have before the afternoon is over. All right, McNeese bringing out the Cavaliers in that pro set. Waiting to see what the situation is, and evidently it's going to be against the Cavaliers as they start to step off five yards. Illegal procedure call against the Cavaliers of St. Mary. So it will be a first and 15 situation. Now the ball back at the 17 yard line. 9.50 left in the first quarter of action. McNeese has him up there again in the pro set. Straight ahead again. And, uh, not too much room once more as Jeff Jacobson and Brad Jones are in there to make the stop for the Beavers. Pick up of maybe uh, a short two, make it second down and about 13. Or 12, take your pick. Aslam, uh, Hasn't had the ball as yet. Here's the fake to him. The throw out to the left again. The man wide open. Caught in there again. And finally wrestled down by Fred Cox. But not before Gene Flax picks up lots of yardage and a first down for the Cavaliers. Brad Jones helping out Cox, making the stop. Okay. Okay, it's the same play that the Cavaliers scored on a few minutes ago. Same pass pattern. The guy's open again. Jim Cox there makes a hit. Brad Jones brings him down. Well, the Beaver pass defense surprisingly being put to a test here. Mr. McNeese uh, dazzling him a little bit in the early stages of the ball. Game. First and ten Cavalier. Just shows the midfield strike. Here's the crossover, a loose ball, and I believe the Beavers recovered. Let's wait and see who comes up with the ball. No, they say no. The whistle had killed the play first. So it'll go second down and about nine. 
Gary Kansky, Roy Brown on the carry. Kansky made the recovery. Second and nine, the ball just shy of the 45-yard line of the Cavaliers. Matt May talking things over with his team on the sideline. Here's a handoff to Adam. He's got to go wide and over there to make a nice stop on him for the Beavers. Witch Tulo, number 42. Surefire open field tackle that didn't let Haslam get outside and pick up any yardage at all. In fact, he might have lost a yard. Make it third and 11 now for the Cavaliers. They haven't been able to move on the ground as yet, and that's what they're famous for. But uh, what nobody knew was that they could throw the ball. And they've been doing that with uh, great success so far. Mike way out to Kane. And McNeese goes back to throw once more. Looking, throwing over here. Let's see, good or not? Good or not? Do they call it a trap or a catch? Let's okay. see, caught it. Here on the replay, here's your, here's your receiver coming out. Just runs a short little pattern, a short little out pattern, slips there, comes back, makes a real nice catch. But it's still short of the first down by about four yards. So it'll be a fourth and four situation now for the Cavaliers. What for them? On the ground, let's wait and see. Jeff Trost was the one that called for the fair catch. And they're signaling down here. We're still waiting to see whose ball it is. And the Cavaliers' Gary Kasky came up with it. And oh my, there's a big break for St. Mary. Okay, the punter gets off a real good punt. Had a lot of good coverage, and Jeff Trost just couldn't find the handle. A lot of, there's a good coverage by the Cavaliers, and they come up with the ball. Coach Jim Hershberger of the Beavers not too happy about the situation right now as the defense has to dig in. Straight ahead to Gene Flax and he works his way down to about the six yard line. Where it'll be second and about four for our first down and uh, make it seven yards for the TD. Rich Stulo along with uh, Max Trubian on the stop for the Beavers. They've really got to dig in now. They're under the gun early in the first quarter. They trail seven to nothing. As McNeese sets them down once more in that throw set. Gives off straight ahead again to Flax, and he goes over his right side, down pretty close to the first down. We'll wait and see where they spot it. Timeout, officials timeout. They're gonna to have to measure and see if they got the necessary yardage for the first down. If not, they'll have two downs to pick it up and it'll be short yardage as such as the chain gang moves out onto the field. First and goal for the Cavaliers. As talking things over, Dan Bruska will double on for the Cavaliers. Now they've got four downs to get it in there. Beaver fans uh, kind of unsettled right at the moment. As Bruska gets down on the ball, McNeese with him. Look, makes a handoff to Adler, keeps it on his own end, circles the left end and goes in for the score. Okay, this senior quarterback, McNeese, is showing a lot of talent, both throwing the ball and running it. On this play here, he fakes that dive into the middle that they've been running with Haslam and just gets outside and outruns everybody into the end zone. Right now, St. Mary's off to a quick 13 to nothing lead with the extra point coming up. And in to try the extra point, Joe Sherhart for the Cavaliers. Okay. Snap, the kick good, flag down on the field, I believe. Beavers were offside on the kick, we'll have to wait and see. If so, I'm sure the Cavaliers will decline the penalty and take the extra point. Offside against Puna Vista, declined by the Cavaliers, and now with six minutes and four seconds to go in the first quarter, the score, St. Mary's of the Plain, 14, the Beavers of Buena Vista, zip. OK, 
Okay, here's that touchdown again. There's the fake, and McNeese just throws a little bit of speed and gets outside everybody there. So far, he's been the story of the game. McNeese, they take, they've taken advantage of both Buena Vista mistakes so far, and uh, they look like a good offensive outfit. Well, by virtue of the offside penalty against the Beavers, the Cavaliers will kick off from their 45-yard line rather than the 40 as we get ready to go once more. Stulu, Rosebud, and Jeff Trost deep for the Beavers, all standing inside their five-yard line. He wipes the mud off his shoes and uh, gets ready once again. He's two for two on conversions. And he's been getting the ball deep on his kickoff. Coming up is Stulil after it. Has it, looks for a hole, finds a spot, gets across the 25 out to about the 26 yard line where once again, the Beaver offense will swing into action. Martinez, Tony Martinez on the stop for the Cavalier. Buena Vista down 14 to nothing. Hoping to get something in gear here. See what happens here. Flags on the play. Illegal procedure against the Beavers and they just can't seem to get untracked. So the ball will come back five to the 21 yard line. First and 15. Sonny Riesland jumped the gun that time for the Beavers. Brad Thurn into the Beaver lineup now. Flanked way out to the right is Steve Trost as Knutson barks him out. Hicks gives on the handoff to Jim Kafer as he gets good running room, picks up about five yards, picking up the loss on the penalty. It'll make it a second and 10 situation now for the Beavers from their own 26 yard line, 27 yard line, make it. Dave Syro back into the lineup now, replacing Brad Turn for the Beavers. Jeff Arp up over the ball. Knudsen with Kafer behind him, marking out the single. Gives on the straight ahead again to Kafer, and he picks up another five. Straight ahead power stuff as the Arp and Phillips and Riesland open up a nice hole for him. So we go to a third and five situation now as Brune is back into the lineup for the Beavers. See if they can't get some offense generated here so far. Schmidt and Van Dyke in there in that last stop for the Cavaliers. Third and five situation. Cyro flanked wide to the right. Knudsen drops back again, has good protection this time, throws it over the middle, and caught or not. Let's wait and see. One man says no. Jim Brune, the intended receiver, and the ball skipped on the ground a little bit in front of him, so we go to a fourth and five situation once again as Al Fitch checks into the Beaver lineup to do the punting and dropping back Pat George for the Cavaliers of St. Mary's. 14-0 in the first quarter, 4.20 to go. In the first quarter action as Fitch waits the snap, gets a good pass. Gets an end over end kick away again. Takes a bounce, takes a Beavers bounce and hits one of the Beavers on the foot. And that was uh, Dennis Rouse down there. He didn't see the ball and it came up and hit him on the lake. So the Cavaliers will take over first and 10 at their own 38 yard line. They lead in the ball game by a score of 14 to nothing. As coach Matt May uh, talks things over with the boys down on the sidelines. Jim Hirschberger, of course, as you can see, quite concerned about the situation on the far side of the field. And Matt May here feeling pretty good right at the moment. Waiting to get the chain gang set as the referee Roy Piper says, okay, we're ready to go. And McNeese sets it down once more. Correction, that's Martinez in there now, and he hands off to Walt Haslam. He goes nowhere. Tony Martinez now in at quarterback for the Cavaliers. Haslam tried to go off his own right side and got racked up by Rich Pesenius and Brad Jones for the Beavers. No gain, make it second and ten. Cavaliers eight and one on the year. 
Want to finish on a winning note, as of course do the Beavers. As Martinez again gives off the Haslam, and he's got nowhere to go as that Beaver defense rises up again to stack him up. Max Struby in there, bottling him up. Okay, the Buena Vista defense again, showing they've been able to stop the run. That's a good play in there by the interior line. They really stacked it up good. Rich Bazinius, that's two straight plays that they've stacked them up. Now we'll have to see if the Beavers can come up a little past defense here and get the ball back. All right, a third and 10 situation now. Thanks, Steve, as we get ready to see what uh, Coach Matt Mays Cavaliers decide to try and do to get the first down. Beavers digging in. Here's a quick pitch out to the outside and coming wide and trying to get some blocking is Roy Brown. He's wrestled out of bounds in there by Jim Rosebud. And I don't know, I believe he's gonna be short of the first down. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. A quick pitch. That time to Roy Brown. But I do believe he's short by about a good yard of the first down. So it'll be a fourth and one situation. Dropping back for the Beavers. Rosebud and Jeff Trost awaiting the punt from Chuck Ferguson if they punt. This is what we're waiting to see. With a 14 to nothing lead, they're probably gonna play it safe to the bell as they indicate now. Standing back on about his own 31 yard line. Chuck Ferguson will get the ball away for the Cavaliers. No rush this time. Oh, now they wait and then they come. Oh, a bad kick. Straight up in the air, rolls out of the right side of his foot and out of bounds on about the 29 yard line of the Beavers. He hesitated and uh, putting the rush on for the Beavers was Dennis Fay. He started to hold up as they were gonna get the return going, they hoped, and then started to come and rattled Mr. Ferguson a little bit evidently. First and 10 Beavers. Harp up over the ball. Wide to the right is Syro. And to the left is Steve Trost. As Knudsen drops right back off the bat, throws a screen to the far side to Kafer. Kafer up the far side line. He's got good yardage and looks like he might have enough for the first down. Knocked out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Jim Kafer. And coming up there to knock him out of bounds, Pat George, okay, along with Harold Edwards for the Cavaliers. Screen pass for the Beavers. The rush comes on strong, and there's Kafer, and then he's got a lot of blockers out in front of him. A good run and a nice tackle there by the Cavaliers. First and 10 Beavers in the ball game, and that's their first one of the ball game, if our uh, memory is correct, as Knutson sets him down once more. Knutson on the keeper. Rolls around the right side and finally gets wrestled down over there on the far side by Harold Edwards. There's a fumble and the Cavaliers have come up with it once again. Looks like Matt McKee on the ball over there for the Cavaliers. So just about the time the Beavers get something going, they come unglued and give up the pigskin. First and 10 Cavalier. At the 43-yard line of the Beavers, Martinez in there at the quarterback slot now. He gives on the far side to Haslam, and he really gets racked up by Stulo on the far side of the field. Good hit. They give him a yard on his forward progress. Be a second and nine situation. Under the two-minute mark in the first quarter action here. Second hit about nine now. For the Cavaliers. Here's the big by McNeese. He starts to roll around to his left. He's picking up good yardage as Rosebud and Cox run him out of bounds. But he uh, picked up about five, a flag on the far side of the field. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. The headlinesman made the call, so it would be an indication that it was uh, in the line. Somebody jumped the gun or whatever. Illegal procedure call against the Cavaliers. That'll wipe out the game. I am assuming that the Beavers will take the penalty and move them back, which would bring up a second and 14 situation for them. So it'll move the ball back to about the 46. As the referee Roy Piper gets the ball, gives it to the umpire Ken Struble the spot save. So we go to a second and 14 situation now for the Cavaliers who 
whose ground game has been ineffective, whose passing game has stunned Beaver fans here in the first quarter. Martinez with that throw set once again. Playing way out with his bat George to the left. McNeese now in there. He's passing. He's throwing and overshoots Pat George. Good coverage that time by a Rosebud for the Beavers. So McNeese, the passing quarterback for the Cavaliers, and Tony Martinez uh, directs the ground game for them, evidently. Mike McNeese, a six foot, 180 pound senior out of East Norwich, New York. Roy Brown checks into the lineup for the Cavaliers for Pat George. As we have a third and 14 situation now. An obvious passing situation for St. Mary. Here's the straight ahead go to Haslam and he's got good yardage. Just about caught him. Guessing Jim Cox on the stop. Okay, on the replay you can see everything, everybody's thinking pass and there's just a straight little handoff straight up the middle and the hole was there. Big game, but not enough for the first down. Brings up a fourth down for St. Mary on about the 32-yard line. Fourth and about one now for the Cavaliers, as they've had all the better of the going here in the first quarter of the ball game. As McNeese brings them out. Holds, turns, fakes, pumps, throws. No good. Pass incomplete. Intended there for Tom Brom and uh, hit the ground. John Rosebud was right on top of him. So the Beavers take over. We've got about 45 seconds left in the first quarter action. As the Beavers take over on about their own 33. Top of your screen, Steve Prost as Knutson gets straight ahead to Kafer. He slants off the right side and gets about four yards. Van Dyke and Kirsham on the stop for the Cavaliers. It'll be a second and six situation. Brad Thurn into that lineup for the Beavers. Prost comes wide to the right. Wide to the left. That's and chance them out. See, Holsey gives to Caver. Nice big hole. Caver with good running room. Might have got the first down. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. They say first and ten Beavers okay. at about the 45-yard line. The Beavers have been using Kafer a lot in the first quarter. It's a good run. There's a big hole up the middle opened up by the line and a good run by Kafer trying to cut back to the outside, but he didn't get there. A good gain and a first down for Buena Vista. And there is the end of the first quarter with the score. The Cavaliers of St. Mary, 14. The Beavers of Buena Vista, nothing. Trying to get something started here in the second quarter. Knutson bootlegging the ball, looking, throwing far downfield, and intended for Dave Syro, and he couldn't hold on. He got racked in there pretty good by Pat George just about the same time. So it'll bring it up now to a third and five situation. The ball right on the midfield stripe, maybe uh, a 
couple of pebbles of the pigskin shy of the midfield strike. So Turn comes back into the Beaver lineup replacing Syro. As Knutson tells him, come on, let's get it going. Link way out to the right, Jim Brun at the top of the screen and turn. At the bottom of the screen as Knutson drops back once again. The screen on the far side again to Caper. He's got blockers out in front of him, picking up good yardage. Cuts back in, still going strong. Gets down across the 35 to about the 33-yard line, and let's see where they spot. At the 34-yard line, it'll be first and 10 Beavers once again. Finally knocking him out, Pat George, along with Roger Schmidt for the Cavaliers. So that little screen pass has been the thing that's been working best for the Beavers to this point in the ballgame. Deep throws back into the lineup for Bina Vista. He goes to the far right. Knudsen again, gonna put the ball in the air. Looks for that screen again. Caper wide over to the end, has lots of running room as they come right back with it. May go all the way down to the five yard line, cuts back in and goes in for the score. Well, when you've got something that's working, stay with it. Jim Caper on another screen pass, right back with the same play, jumps 33 yards into Pater. Right there, the Beavers come back with the exact same play. There's Knutson in the pass, it's right there. A lot of downfield blocking by Jeff Arps down there, Sonny Riesland, the whole offensive line really got downfield. In the last five yards, Caper just put on a little burst of speed and got through. All right, Keith Eggley in now. For the Beavers, Kevin Eggley, correction, to try and make it a 14-7 ball game. Snap, a good snap, the ball down, the kick in the air, and no good, off to the right. Kind of squibbed it, so that hurts. So now it's a 14-6 ball game, but the Beavers have cut into that margin. Dick Utter, another word from you over there about the Beavers getting themselves untracked a little bit. We all expected an offensive ball game. Uh, Beavers have averaged 34 points a game, and the other ball club, the Cavaliers, about 26 points a game. I think it took a little bit for uh, Buena Vista to get untracked. Uh, in my, uh, I don't feel that that extra point is going to make that big a difference. There are going to be more scores. Okay, thanks, Dick. Uh, they had to wipe some of the mud off the ball as Egley will get ready to kick off now for the Beavers. He had kicked 12 straight extra points, and uh, wouldn't you know, didn't get that one. Wouldn't you know, didn't get that one. Deep for the Cavaliers is Pat George, standing on about the three-yard line. The approach and the kick. Good end-over-end -end kick that George will field on about the two. As he comes upfield, starts to cut to the far side and gets nailed over there on a nice tackle. Pick up that beaver number for you. Larry Norum was the man that got down there and made the stop at just about on the 20-yard line. So the Cavaliers take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line, and now the Beaver defense will see what they can do about getting the ball back and uh, closing the gap some more. Ruska over the ball for the Cavaliers, and we've got Martinez back in there at quarterback now with Haslam and Brown in the backfield with him. Here's a handoff straight ahead to Haslam. He goes nowhere as Rich Pesenius again, the first man to make the stop along with Max Struby for the Beavers. Got a couple. Reska over the ball for the Cavaliers, and we've got Martinez back in there at quarterback now with Haslam and Brown in the backfield with him. Here's a handoff straight ahead to Haslam. He goes nowhere as Rich Pesenius again, the first man to make the stop along with Max Struby for the Beavers. Got a couple, a short two, so make it second and a long eight. Ideal football weather. If you're a football player, a good nip in the air. Field in excellent shape. As Brusca goes over the ball once again as Martinez sets him down in the pro set. Well, that is sick. Gives on a quick pitch out, coming wide or trying to come wide and then losing his footing is Walt Haslam for the Cavaliers as Keith Stribe was right up there to make sure he didn't go too far anyway. Shut down. 
Might have lost uh, a yard on it, so make it a third and nine situation. It was Roy. Martinez sets him, but I believe we've got a delay of the game. They took a little bit too much time, so it'll now come up third and 14 as the ball will move back to about the 16-yard line. So now... What do you do? They've had good luck with the short pass out in the flat. Number 40 checking into the lineup for the Cavaliers, Chuck Ferguson. Wonder if they've got a quick kick. See where Ferguson lines up. Evidently not. Martin, yes, yes, they do. And the ball comes down, rolls around. Rosebud lets it roll up, tries to pick it up. And it is recovered by the Cavaliers, but we've got a flag way back downfield. We'll have to wait and see what that is. Illegal procedure against St. Mary's and a big break for the Beavers. Illegal procedure against St. Mary's. And that ball, slippery as it is, Rosebud tried to field it, couldn't find the handle. And St. Mary's recovered, but as a result of the penalty, they're going to have to come back and try it all over again, I do believe. The referee talking things over. with Rich Stulo, who is acting as captain, or correction, not Stulo, but uh, Max Struby acting as... Back to about the 11-yard line now, and a big break. For the Beavers, because when they got Ferguson in the lineup, we suspicioned a quick kick. That's what he did. Barely got the ball, really, over the line of scrimmage, over the outrushing hands of the Beaver defensive lineman. And where the Cavaliers would have had good field position, oh. now they got to come up with something else. Third and about 20. As Roy Brown checks into their backfield. Here's the fake and the pitch, and Brown has the ball, but he goes nowhere. Beavers were waiting. In there leading the stop, Gary Schmidt, the nose guard for the Beavers. So now they come into a fourth down situation and dropping back into a safety position for Buena Vista, Jeff Trost, along with John Rosebud. Okay. Let's, uh... Standing in his end zone, Ferguson for the Cavaliers. Good snap from center, gets the kick, it's a low kick. Man alive. Rolls the ball around, it rolls dead and will be downed by the Cavaliers. Where? Let's wait and see. But a flag down on the field. Personal foul, roughing the kicker against the Beaver. Okay. So uh, that's another roughing the kicker. 